another visitor. Stay a while. Stay forever. Hello, wonderful humans and other sentients. Today I will show you in this tutorial how to hurt people. So, let it be my privilege to lead you into the art of destruction. These tutorials won't be a usual tutorials because there are a lot of really, really good people who just specified one type of weapon and if you seek around on YouTube you will find really precise and detailed descriptions and tutorials about those weapons. I'm just like to point out that if you are in the need of hurting people these are the things you can do. So Let's take in a broader sight of what waiting for us. This is a little stupid fortress just to hold those beautiful, beautiful kind of massacre and pain equipment. They are not the best, they are not the nicest, but they definitely will serve us, serve us well. Of course, As a long time player, I will show you first the cram cannon. This beauty fires huge slow moving slow moving uh, projectiles shells and uh, the more time you let it uh, fill up with juicy damage, the more it will go bomb. So As you can see in the description, which is on the screen bottom right side, it has a humongous damage of all the beautiful kind of damage you can imagine in this game, of course. It has kinetic damage, it has explosive damage, it has EMP damage, fragment damage, and even an information which uh, is called Ormor Piercing. Ormor Piercing is a thing, uh, it goes like uh, you want to go through the enemy's armor and it divides your damage. But uh, you can get more damage, more armor piercing you have. Usually, I think, If the enemy has 20 armor and you fire upon it with 20 armor piercing, then the dam damage will be the same amount. So, for example, 3244 kinetic damage is conveys pain to the enemy structure. If the armor twice as big as our armor piercing, the damage will be halved. If the armor is half of the armor piercing, the damage will be the same, sadly, not doubled. Okay, and uh, of course, if I make an error, you are free to comment below the video. So, about the damage types on this oldie but goldie type of cannon, kinetic is just blam, you hit the enemy with a baseball bat. It's kinetic. Explosive is an explosion which has a radius and I like to think that it behaves like a silly putty or water. It flows around seeking weak points in the enemy armor. EMP is a rather funny damage It can travel in metallic structures, but glass, rubber, stone, mm, surprisingly heavy armor, and uh, wood uh, just uh, takes it and has no problem with it except the heavy armor. 
and that is another tutorial probably made by some other people. Okay, and fragments are little uh, pieces of uh, a lot of pieces of um, tiny things like when a granite explodes and they have not so much uh, armor piercing value but they are a lot they usually convey not so bad damage to hurt people of course and they are myriad and you can set usually their frag code uh, just like with a shotgun you see it can be bigger it can go all around or just a uh, one degree uh, little going through line but uh, in this game the fragments has more damage when the cone is bigger so the best damage they have when the cone is all around it's uh, called uh, 180 degrees but it's on the both sides so it's all around you see and uh, the one degree cone has uh, small damage fragments but all of them going in the same way so it depends what you need all right the density level is just the uh, ability of this cram cannon as i told you so more you let it not fire the more damage it will have even bigger so the first uh, shot from the cram cannon is every battle is bigger than the after coming shots so i think everything was told about the damage types so let's see the cram cannon the cram cannon has these connectors they join all the things you must know that every component not only the weapons which we will hurt people but uh, for example engines shields the new shields or uh, any other components steam engines which i hate of course uh, has a lot of components and you can build them just like in minecraft if you remember the mod called big reactor that was a modular thing you can fill it up with different cooling fluids uh, different length and shape uh, uh, containers contain a few rods and just like that so in this game all the different components are modular just like those big reactors so these are the connectors they connecting all the components together to provide this firing piece the power to hurt people the most important components are the cram firing piece of course and i will go to build mode because then we will see here what components i'm on so this is the predictor the predictor is a simple component but it's important especially for testing if you want to see where these big gun targets it simply just draws a line and predicts the current uh, fly path of the shell all right the second most important thing is this fusing box it's really really important to set the time form launch the inner shell and the penetration that fuses on it if you choose one from here a new slider will appear but i found these the most useful settings the time fused is a thing which explodes the shell automatically after set time it sounds stupid but just a bit later you will see why i include this fuse the inertial fuse explodes the shell when the shell changes path it's usually when it hits something but fails to explode for example maybe shields 
and penetration depth explodes the shell when it goes inside the enemy below the armor it just burrows, uh, burrows itself into the body of the enemy but if the enemy weak we have to be graceful and still explode the shell instead of the really really hard and big small minivan size shell just going through the enemy and goes more after it and then explodes. This is a stupid thing. No, penetration depth is needed, believe me. So, inertia helps if the big shell somehow breaks off the enemy. And I will talk about this next with this component. So, uh, let's see. The third most important part, laser target arm. It's a nice cute thing. The main function is it provides for the time fuse, the time when the shell should hit the enemy. So this little block and the time fuse together transforms your near misses, of course, to hurting people to hurting the enemy, because if it's just a near miss, it will explode just beside the enemy, hurting it. The next thing you must know, that the bigger the shell, the smaller port on this cram cannon would be used for fuses, because fuses take up precious space in the shell. So I advise you to always, always build unnecessary big cram cannons. Because big cram cannons contain more hurting power and less of the fuses, which are important of course. The fourth most important part of the cram cannon is the gauge increase. They have uh, not so bad armor value. But the mere main function is making the shell bigger. You need to take care somewhat of the barrel because uh, you have the elevation barrel which elevates, of course, the barrel. You have the simple barrel which, which makes uh, your shell go more accurate and faster. And uh, you need to balance these together. Uh, usually I will build my uh, barrel from simple barrels and then I, with shift click of course, will make it so that it has a really nice, as you can see here, but the middle button not functions very well. It has 40 Five. No, 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 sorry, sorry, me bad. So, somewhere on this interesting text, there is the thing, how much degree can this barrel go up, down and sideways. I usually use uh, the, not the elevation barrels, because they are slow, but just a moment, please. Elevation bar. No. The motor drive and bar because it's faster, and it not only can uh, move the bar up and down, but to sideways. You will shoot more precisely with those, and uh, you have better chance to hurt people. Alright, and uh, little components here, I will try to show you, fragmentation pellets uh, decide the percentage of the whole damage, how much percentage uh, it will be fragments, just like this, hardener, no no, just like this. 
This uh, set the percentage of the explosive force. And of course the EMP pallet set the percentage of the EMP damage. You see, uh, if I would uh, replace the explosive parts with EMP pallets, then this damage and the EMP would be bigger and the explosive would be smaller at the same amount. But I'm not the calculating type. And lastly, almost lastly, the hardener pellets which are not connected, curse you, uh, they are set, setting the armor piercing value. Hmm. If they are not they are not connected. Okay, it's an old blueprint, doesn't matter. The important thing is what I say, not what you see. And inside there is a third part, I think, yeah, the ammo boxes. These ammo boxes uh, quicken the loading, the cramming, and uh, so they set the fire rate. And it's something like a percentage thingy, because uh, <coughs> if I have... Uh, one of each type, then I put in another type of explosive, then the explosive will be a little bigger. But if I then uh, put in uh, not an explosive but uh, EMP pallet, then some value subtracted from the explosive and it gets uh, the first EMP damage amount just like that. So you need to balance them. And the usual uh, building thing is, you can see the connectors are here. So usually you will make a column from the connectors, set all on the four side these autoloaders, and on the autoloaders you set your ammo crates, the five types, so AP, EMP, Explosive and Fragments and the ammo boxes. And uh, you will have a bonus if you set them up right because I have here a column, here, here and here. And uh, the ammo boxes, all type of the ammo boxes which has autoloaders on their most size give their ability almost four times so you just uh, get yourself a nice and more hurtful gun if you just uh, cram in more connections so this ammo box give its bonus here and here because these four autoloaders are connected to this and I think I will fix this not R but mirror mode yes this is the problem because they are not connected but now they are should be no 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 me bad me stupid connected from the bottom oh because in the middle there is oh, I see there is no column in the middle so I need to do this and the cannon just went a little bit smaller but it's not a problem because now all the parts are connected good so, this was the crab thingy. Uh, next uh, cannon in the game was the APS cannon. And this is, uh, that was the nostalgic one. It has a really good terror factor, really good damage, and it usually can finish units which cannot move 
or just slowly. But everybody screams when they see the big minibus sized uh, shells of the Krem cannon. So the next is the APS cannon. You can really well configure it. And I just show you this a bit. Of course, it too has a time the fuse and the laser distance measurer or how do they call this bit? I always forgot the right names. Laser targeter. So you can do that here too. And it is called the spaghetti gun because here is the barrel as you could see here and this is the manfet this is the thing which moves the whole barrel and it's clipping through so you can build a gun which uh, uh, cannon sorry you are not a gun you are a cannon so you can build a cannon which can raise it's barrel through your armor and that is not cheese, not at all. And after it comes the firing piece, which is the main component. And after that, you have these gauge increases, coolers and uh, things like that. More gauge increases you pack in, the bigger will be the shell. And uh, there is just one important thing here. This thing could only connect to the firing piece from this part. So as you can see, it uh, splits the spaghetti two ways, 90 degrees. You cannot connect to the firing piece which this and this side of it. So that is important. And then you will get out your three-dimensional Tetris ability, or just uh, you will have it necessary, and make the spaghetti so it could be longer and things like that. And of course you have this little bastard, the six-way connector, but you don't need it if your Tetris is really good because to these cooling vents and gauge increases you can connect your loaders. Sadly, you couldn't connect your loaders to this T-shaped splitter. Alright, you have the auto loaders. It comes in different sizes and there is a version which uh, loads faster but needs to be completely empty to reload but that is in the other people's tutorials, of course, as I said before. To the autoloaders, you can connect ammo clips. And it's really important, do not use these things, because they are looking nice. You can see the shells inside them stacked, but they cause a little bit of lag. So it's really better if you just use the solid clips, they are not looking so nice, but you don't want to be able to look up, look up on your ammo clips, because any damage will destroy them, freeze the little shells from them, just like in this gun, and the little shells go around and destroy your unit, and won't do, won't cause pain, won't hurt people, and this tutorial is about hurting people, not to hurting yourself. And you will connect to the ammo clips little loaders, just like this, heavy inverted ammo corner, the arse of your dear mother. But, 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 oh, this. So, ammo intakes. So the usual thing is the spaghetti. To the spaghetti, connected autoloaders. To autoloaders, you connect the 
ammo clips and to the ammo clips you can connect the ammo intakes. Is it true? No. Because you can connect directly to the fire piece these ammo intakes and that way you can load in really slowly of course 30 meter long shells. But this is not for this tutorial. You will look up elsewhere. The best configuration as I learned it from Mati is uh, two ammo intakes per ammo clip and maybe two ammo clips per autoloader. You can of course connect these intakes to the autoloader directly or as I said before to the firing piece for immensely large shells. Okay. This is not the best configuration, but this cannon serves me right. It has other components like this recoil absorber, which is when it is bigger, it takes more recoil, it takes more time to set it, uh, re resetting it and uh, conveying the next recoil absorption. And we have a lot of other components which shouldn't be in this tutorial. And of course, I said this cannon is configurable more than all, all the Goldie Cram Cannon. Why? Because we have these ammo customizers which have to have on one end this ammo controller. And if I enter it with the letter Q, you can see that this is a flag shell. Flag means you can set this finally with the wheel of the mouse and you can see this is a 65 radius so it's a 100, 130 meter diameter explosion bigger explosion smaller damage that is flag it's really good taking down for example torpedoes and missiles and shearing off uh, G uh, not gentle, but uh, high-tech components, for example, detection, anti-missile lasers, and those nasty things which prevent you to hurt people outside of the enemy's armor. And I always use this, this is important, super cavitation base makes uh, your shell able to target and go below water. Or come up from other water. But the cell shell composition is not my, not this tutorial's topic. And in the ammo intake you can set this, usually with this, but sometimes not because these cannons can uh, fire multitude type of shells at the same time as you set it. But this is just a flag cannon. Maybe I, I will say that another important part is that it has a local weapon controller and where are you? I it should have an SEV. Just a moment, I need to SEVS controller which targets enemy missiles. And it should have it somewhere here, but now I couldn't find it. The important thing is that you set the priority of the weapon controller to zero and the SIS controller, anti-missile cannon controller, I don't know why it's SIS in the short form, the abbreviation, and you set this to priority one, so it will first target the missiles and the torpedoes, and then if there are no missiles and torpedoes, it will target out here. This. So it first it has the priority. So after shooting down all the missiles and torpedoes, or if they are known, it will hurt the enemy people. that was the advanced cannon. So, that's 
see the next one. Missiles. This is called AR Configurable 2. You have this small missiles which has a lot of components and short lifetime and they are in one missile launcher there are already four. There are the normal sized missiles which has uh, fewer components. It has uh, I think four components per block. The normal missiles has one component per block, just like that. And there are the big missiles, which pack a really serious bunch, but they are resource heavy. Okay, that was the missiles. Uh, on the missiles, there are just one really important part, beside, of course, the usual components, which other people already told you about. Always check it has a connected identify friend or foe add-on. And I think you get it why it's so important. You don't want to hurt your own units because the missiles uh, just need detection for firing and the general direction of the enemy mostly. Of course it's not true, but mostly it's true. Then they have uh, detectors and uh, automatically try to hit the enemy. Good. So, let's see now the energy part of the weapons. We have here a laser. This uh, little uh, fortress is a bit tricky because I just use one weapon controller for this spin block because a weapon controller controlling a two red block or a spin block will uh, control all the weapons on that part of the ship. So I just made this. Here are some glass, you can see it. And let's see about the laser. On the laser. I will check it, because I'm not sure, because of the updates. Wow! Wow! Oh, I must say... I don't believe it, sorry. Let's see again. Yes! So, now you can put all your laser components on the turret. You don't need to separate it, the older building uh, type, and please comment under the video if I'm wrong. You needed to have on the main body the laser power generator thingy, then you with these laser transceivers needed to uh, radiate energy uh, exactly through the spin block or the turret block the turret block or the spin block axis because otherwise it won't be radiated through and as you can see it goes through solid blocks then goes to this laser transceiver Laser transceivers can accept radiated laser energy from any direction and they shoot it out just one way and receiving on this little flutter way. So the energy goes through here to the laser combiner and goes out from the laser optic. The beneficial thing with the lasers are they are called heat scan weapons. So as soon as you fire, you are already in that moment hurting the enemy. So they are very good against the quick moving or erratically moving targets. Uh, of course have these little components on the laser energy generator, it just takes the energy from your unit. This is the main collection block. Uh, you can see here all the data you need. 
and uh, you need to pump in the energy with different kinds of pumps. So we have this storage laser cavity. This is just a storage, it won't increase your laser energy. The next one, the oldest one, are these laser cavities which can store a really small amount of laser energy but they have four inputs to put these pumps on it. Really the pumps are the things which are converting the ship's energy to laser energy. And these little cavities usually keep the energy and connect to the pumps. There is the single input laser cavity it can store more energy than the simple cavity, but only have one pump connection. And we have two different kinds of pumps, the small laser pump and the big one. Of course, the big ones convey more energy from the ship to the laser. And you need just to play around with this, and there are really, really lot of detailed calculations about it on the From the Depths forum, so if you are calculating type, just look it up over there. We have the frequency doubles and the laser destabilizers. The destabilizers Uh, they make uh, the laser to use up laser energy quicker, so DPS will be bigger. And the frequency doublers are making your ore more piercing value, which I already told you about, bigger. It's simple. Yes? Yes. Nobody decides as I hear. Good. So we have the laser. The uh, quality of the laser, the bad things about it, that water and smoke feel hugely decreases damage. But you need other tutorials to learn about that. And lastly, almost lastly, I'm always lying, there is the pack, the particle cannon. And this thing is a beauty. It has a glitch to shoot through terrain. I, I love it so much. And uh, you need to spaghetti it too. You have this big one which fires this way and has connectors on the four sides and on the back. Beware because Anywhere you don't put a connection, it can shoot out, I think. But I'm sure if you don't put a connection here, so just behind the big firing piece, then the big firing piece won't work. It's used to different tetrises when you use the side connectors to shoot. And as you can see, I have a really nice spaghetti here going around and around, because the longer it gets, more damage it will have. So I'm trying to go through this spaghetti. It has a... Please show me the name has a particle tube terminator. You can do the spaghetti this way. So it was a long spaghetti, goes to the terminator, the particles go back through all of this long spaghetti and that gives you damage. On the sides I used a different kind of spaghetti. Okay, because it is so small can see that it connects right here, but making it smaller won't show. So this is another kind of spaghetti. It came off the left side of the particle cannon. Goes down. Goes up. Beautiful spaghetti. Yeah, I love it. 
just like this. Oh, it's terminated again. All right. Let's just say I have here one spaghetti which won't go terminated, but that's why I wanted it to show you. Go, go, go. Yeah, yeah. No, it's terminated too. All right. So this is not that kind of spaghetti, but you can make it go around. So coming out here and coming in the, in the other side. No, not this big one, please. And you need to connect the ending part of the spaghetti back to the particle cannon with this port. And then it will be, give you more damage than a simple terminated spaghetti of uh, the particle tubes. So, if you make a loop, it's better, but harder to do spaghetti with it, of course. So, mm, it sounds simple, but the best thing, which I like in the particle cannon, you can set its color, of course, color, who doesn't like color? You can set a lot of abilities here, more accurate, uh, smaller, the damage will be, or you have this animation which makes uh, less and less damage, more and more, when it's farther and farther away. And, uh, of course, more time you let it to load, the bigger the damage will be, and energy consumption, blah, blah, blah. But the most important part I like is you can set it to piercing, explosive shock, EMP, and impact. Impact is the usual, you hit the enemy with a baseball bat. EMP is that... Uh, Electrical damage, which uh, can take out easily electrical parts under metal or metal-like armor. This is an explosion, and the piercing is a thing which can shoot through the enemy unit and leaving a little small hole. Think about snipers with this damage. So the armor piercing is big. And it can modify it on the fly, so I go against DVG. Okay, explosive damage. Oh, there is a really armored Onyx watch ship. All right, it will be piercing or EMP. I love it. And of course, there are little cute decorations for the uninitiated, which uh, are people or sentients who just became believers in the 1-2 game and uh, now want to make something and we have these for them to play to don't cry around of course the simple weapons and in this update there are a lot of simple weapons light ones as you can see and more serious uh, older stupider builders are using this only for decoration and I lie of course the most important simple weapon is the ram because you never know if you collide with an enemy ship uh, usually both of you will take damage but if you want really to hurt people then you cover your unit this beautiful rams which won't get damaged, but really, really damaged enemy, the faster you go, the heavier you are, more damage. And it's just beautiful breaking into the two half of the enemy, just by simple ramming it. Alright, I think I covered all the weapons, and if I like, then please look at other tutorials and or make a comment about what I left out, because if I'm stupid, I need to be corrected. Okay, the last thing, we just need to see this in work. 
so we have here this nice little post test subject called the Marauder from the first faction. It has a huge cannon and see, I told you so, rams, rams are important. And there is my little base. Little tiny base and let's see if I unpause this. Yes, that was the piercing. That was the flag. Good, nice. I'm thinking uh, it's hurting. I don't see the cram shell, but no matter. I think you can feel the pain. It suffers. What about you, my little tiny darling? Why are you not firing? Oh! Not on a turret, just a moment, please. No, 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 because it's already dead. Shame. But I still have to show you the cram. What is hurting without a cram cannon? Can I not know that is? And as you can see, there is the shell predictor. No. Oh no, the middle button. Don't fire anymore, but there goes the shell. And if I'm quick, I could find it somewhere. Yes. So, this is the shell, and it's huge, really, really huge. And after a short time, it will explode, peppering everything with fragments. So, I hope this uh, little tutorial about hurting people was useful for you and you really want to hurt people, are you not? Yes, you do. And this is not working, uh, please. If you just press Q on one of the detection components and press auto adjust, it will be really better for you. Alright, that's it for now, folks, and thanks for seeing. The important thing that how you can hurt people. And of course, after you learned about hurting and about all the important parts of your units, you can make units which hurts people more and more and more. For example, this barrel down here. Because I like to shoot, and I like to shoot a lot. This is my uh, little airship, which is uh, built mainly from cannons, and there goes the cram shots. And I don't think anything remains from its nose or from the inside, because I'm shooting so much more than something. And I think it's already dead. That was the time. There is a funny measurement uh, marauders per minute. Which we are laughing about, but for example, it has a lot of missiles, this unit. As you can see, a lot, a lot, a lot of missiles are hitting me or not because I have the guys. All right, that's hurt me, but my suspicious lump on the end already cures me of it. It's very good. And I just love to shoot a lot of shells. 
to the enemy don't like it. So this was the tutorial about hurting people. If you liked it, uh, please put your thumb where I like it and it will be a really big mess of liking each other. Oh well, and I'm almost regenerated up. I like to build cannons. Um, sorry, I like to build airships from cannons. And thank you for Mati for that beautiful, beautiful gun down there. Or cannon, sorry. <laughs>